The Navonic story has been a compelling one over this past period. ASX NVX has been a true market dialing, seeing an acceleration in its share price and delivering a range of different announcements over this past period, really focusing on company progression and becoming that key component within the broader EV battery value chain in North America. However, at the back end of last week, the ASX NVX share price had a significant sell-off, losing nearly a third of its value, down by over 30%. And you might be wondering, what's happening to Novonix? Where does ASX NVX currently sit? And what does this mean for the story up ahead? If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out as well. If you're new here, welcome. We make daily videos each and every day, so make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on as well so you won't miss any of the daily episodes. Before we explore the sell-off, some of the news and the different discussion points that might have contributed to it, it makes sense for us to take a bit of a step back and have a think about who is Navonix? What is the story? So at their core, Navonix is playing in the battery technology solution space. They're a group of companies with a range of different focuses, but the core pillar within that is their BTS, battery technology solutions business. At its core, they have the most accurate battery testing technology, you might have seen with some of your favorite AV battery materials companies, some of the lithium companies you might be looking at, that they've been doing some battery testing with Navonix. Navonix really has the ability to look across the value chain, all the way from companies that might be extracting the raw materials, all the way through to OEMs and producers of whether it's vehicles or the battery systems themselves. This opportunity is where they really leverage the knowledge and the insights that they have, and they now focus on the opportunity to prototype, to develop, and really focus on battery solutions further down the value chain as well. So they have their anode materials business. They're now currently the only qualified US-based supplier of synthetic graphite anode material. As a result of this, they've got a couple of early agreements, and they're really looking to ramp this up quite significantly over the next decade. And then on the other side as well, which haven't had a huge amount of discussion points or announcements recently, but definitely do have the ability to be major growth drivers over the next few years is a cathode materials business which is still in the early stages as well and then Amira which is a partnership surrounding ESS or energy storage systems it's quite a fascinating proposition they've got a range of different growth levers and as you can see each of them is really focused on this next generation of electric vehicle adoption and hoping to be a key pillar within the broader EV battery supply chain within North America we'd love to know your thoughts so drop in a comment below what you think about Navonics where do you think ASX MVX heads from here? And what you thought about the sell-off at the back end of last week? And before we do dive in, a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss on the channel is financial advice. Obviously, the stocks we discuss are not buy recommendations. These videos are just here as a general discussion to be a starting spot for you to do your own research from. And so before discussing the sell-off, the price query, some of the different factors that may have contributed to it, I thought it makes sense for us to just quickly reflect on one of the recent major announcements, which was that Philip 66, one of the leading global players, has taken a strategic interest within Navonix. So they announced an agreement to acquire a 16% stake in Navonix, which is not an insignificant amount. But building on top of that as well, Philip 66 is one of the leading global manufacturers of specialty coke, which, if you are familiar with it, is one of the key ingredients as feedstock into synthetic graphics. And obviously, as the world moves away from fossil fuels, which a specialty coke is actually a byproduct of fossil fuel production, as the world moves away from fossil fuel, this could become more and more hard to get your hands onto. And obviously, it's such a critical component into synthetic graphite, securing that supply chain for years to come for Navonix is a real big tick and it attracted a lot of investor interest. You'll see on some of the timelines as we look at the chart that this investment and this announcement was actually the catalyst for the recent run upwards for ASX MVX's share price over the past few months. And so then that brings us to Friday. As mentioned, the MVX share price fell by over 30%. It was a swift fall. And as the quote often goes, the markets when they sell off often take the elevator straight down. It was rapid and there was a range of different questions about why this has, ha has happened. As you know, everything on the markets is a confluence of factors coming together. Some will be weighted more heavily. Different investors, different people perceiving sell-offs will contribute different factors to having the heaviest weighting for it. But there was a range of different factors that Navonix discussed in their price query or their please explain letter to the ASX. So they stated that it was, there was three different factors. First of all was inquiries from shareholders regarding the final director's interest notice for one of their directors that was lodged. There was another CNBC article and some discussion points from Tesla surrounding the possibility or the seeking of an extended tariff waiver for Chinese graphite, which we'll talk about later in this video. And then there was another article as well in the Financial Review, which ran an article on the broader technology sector, but Navonix was mentioned in that as well. These were some of the possible explanations that Navonix thought may contribute into the sell-off. 
But as we saw, often when sell-offs happen, they start, there's a catalyst for it downwards, and then selling really begets more selling, and it just starts to take on a life of its own as a snowball picks up pace. And so having a look at that chart here, you can see here on the left, we've highlighted the day of the announcement for the Philips 66 investment. Novonix was trading in and around that $3 mark. And obviously after the run upwards, just over a few short months, Novonix peaked above that $12 mark. So you can see here, it's been a rapid uplift for ASX MVX. There was a lot of exuberance coming into the share price. You can see it was almost a straight linear line upwards. It continued pushing higher and higher. There were a few gaps to be filled on the chart. But of course, there was a range of different fascinations about the opportunity that Novonix could feed into over the longer term in part of that EV battery supply chain. We can see here for the sell-off, as mentioned, it was over 30%. At the worst of it, it did peak just below that 50-day moving average. We can see that it did bounce off the session lows, which of course is better than finishing right on the session lows. It showed a little bit of strength, and so there'll be all eyes now on where ASX MVX opens up the week moving forward, and whether there's going to be a swift bounce, whether there'll be a gap upwards, whether there'll be further selling, or what the story is going to mean. And it's worth noting as well, to think about why sell-offs happen. As we know, often there's a catalyst, whether it's a fundamental driver, maybe there's a bad report, maybe there's some negative news internally, maybe there's some numbers that came out that were not expected, or often it can be sentiment driven as well, where there can be an article ran, there can be a discussion from Tesla coming out in this case, or whatever it could be, could be that initial trigger for a sell-off. But often, as we know, once a sell-off starts, selling begets more selling as the quote goes. Stop losses can be triggered, which can mean that the next wave of selling begins. Then as investors start to look at the red on the screen, they might get scared, they might be fearful, they may make emotional decisions to then sell off. And obviously as more selling happens, more stop losses are triggered on the way. And it can become like a snowball as it starts to really increase over time. Of course, nobody has a direct reason or the individual reason as to why sell-offs occur. And there's no one distinct reason. It is a confluence of factors as we've mentioned, but it is worth noting about the different mechanics that can contribute into it. As mentioned, I'd love to know your thoughts on it all. So drop in a comment below about what you thought about Friday's session. Where do you think MVX will head into the new week up ahead? And what do you think this means for the longer term story for Navonix as well? And so I just wanted to spend a little bit of time discussing Elon and Tesla's graphite request. As we know, there were a range of different tariffs put on a range of goods globally, but particularly on many Chinese goods that were being imported into the United States. And so Tesla supported the renewal of the exclusion of artificial graphite from the Section 301 tariffs. So in October, there was discussions that potentially some tariffs may be excluded if there was a need for it. Obviously, we know that supply chains around the world are coming under pressure. And so the Individual companies or organizations have the ability to apply for exclusions depending that will be decided on a case-by-case -case basis and Tesla have exercised that opportunity and have sought the exclusion of graphite from these tariffs. So tariffs were obviously levied during the Trump administration's trade war as we're all familiar with. Not only Tesla, but SK Innovation as well, both requested a waiver on tariffs for graphite, which is used in the anode component of lithium ion batteries. We've talked about this at length on the channel before. And it will be interesting to see now what happens with the Biden administration, whether they choose to take down these tariffs, which will obviously help to accelerate the importation of graphite in from China. As we know, the majority of the world's graphite supply comes from China, and obviously it's imported. It becomes a lot more difficult when there are tariffs on there. And at the moment, there is no real graphite supply internally from the United States. As we discussed at the start of the video, Novonix is currently the United States only qualified synthetic graphite supplier. And obviously more and more product needs to come online as demand for electric vehicles comes online because graphite is just such a key component with the graphite anodes. And sure, this sell-off could have been contributed to this news. Maybe investors read it and they got scared because they thought, hey, there will be a lot of graphite potentially coming in from China. Is this gonna be a direct competition for Novonix's anode battery materials business? Maybe that was the logic behind it. But I think if we take a step backwards and think about more of the medium to longer term business, particularly with the fact that Novonix is bringing on supply in a staged capacity, like many other materials companies are, they're bringing capacity on a staged capacity. And what this is stating is there is a significant amount of demand for graphite product. And obviously we all know about the need to localize supply chains. This focus has been happening around the world. European supply chains are being localized rapidly and really being mobilized at the moment in Europe for the EV battery material supply chain. We know there was a huge infrastructure bill put down recently and there's significant amount of investment going into localizing the supply chain in the United States as well. So there's really potentially two takeaways from this. Firstly, there is significant demand for graphite, which is not going to be able to be satisfied easily. So any supply that does come online will likely be able to find a home, which is a tick for Novonix in that medium term. But then I think on the other side as well, it shows that obviously the government in the United States is going to want to 
prefer, invest into, fund and support the EV battery materials supply chain locally. And so as a result of that, it opens up Novonics and other players in the supply chain, potentially for more funding, for more opportunity to get some investment, for the ability to bring projects online faster with the support from the government side. So in the short term, sure, maybe this is a bit of a headwind for companies that are trying to bring supply online if there's more supply coming in from external sources such as Asia. However, over the medium term, it could be actually a tailwind behind the broader sector. So it's going to be an interesting one to see how this dynamic plays out. And so just having a look at that anode battery materials business here, we can see that Novonix is looking to bring on capacity in a stage capacity, initially at 10k tons per year and out over the next decade, hopefully up to 150,000 tons per year. This is a significant amount, but if we think about how much is going to be forecasted to be needed in not only just North America, but then extrapolating that out globally as well, this is only going to be just a small component of that. And as we've discussed, there's likely to be a home for that. Tesla's not the only EV battery materials maker in the North American region. And then not only for batteries themselves for electric vehicles but energy storage systems as well as we think more about grid storage and these other demand for graphite anodes and for battery materials more broadly as we know Novonics have a number of initial commercial agreements with big global players with Samsung SDI with first delivery actually due at the back end of this year and then Sanyo as well it's likely that more offtakes will come to market over the next few years and this will be interesting to see how this plays out as well and so it has been a tumultuous past period for holders of ASX MVX. There's been a rapid uplift and then, of course, a significant sell-off on Friday. But I think it does really come back to that old adage on the markets and it's, when in doubt, zoom out. We've zoomed out here to a period really just over a year ago. For those who have been interested in the MVX story for an extended period of time, many will remember the run-up last year. I think it was around September time in the lead up to Tesla's battery day. There's a huge excitement surrounding the million mile battery. Was Novonix going to be announced? I remember the share price ran up from around $1 to $2 in not that long of a period of time. There was no partnership announced and then Novonix's share price sunk by nearly 50% back to that $1 mark. If we look at it there from the lows of that sell-off there, where it lost nearly 50% just over 12 months ago. And then we have a look at the move upwards from the closing price on Friday. We can still see it's still over around 700%. So when in doubt, zoom out. Sure, it was a heavy session at the back end of the week, but we know there was a lot of exuberance in the share price, not just for Novonics, but for a lot of these EV battery materials companies more broadly. As we can see here, it was almost a straight linear line upwards. It was a rapid move up. And there were gaps to be filled on the chart. And of course, it will depend on which investors, which analysts are looking at it. But people may be thinking that potentially the share price may be disconnected from the fundamentals in the short term. However, regardless of where you sit on that side of the coin, I don't think that invalidates a long-term opportunity for a company like Novonix if they can continue to grow, continue to focus on R&D, leveraging their world-class board and leadership team and their battery technology solutions business, which gives them visibility across the value chain. There is a significant opportunity over this next decade and beyond for Novonix. In terms of valuation, that's another discussion. Everybody's going to have different interpretations of it. Obviously, Novonix, by and large, is still pre-commercial. Obviously, they're basically still pre-revenue as well. And so the valuation that investors are willing to pay, obviously, everybody's going to have a different discussion about that. Particularly, as we've heard, Jay Powell come out more hawkish recently, stating that potentially inflation may not be as transitory as he thought. We might need to speed up the taper. And then consequently, interest rates may be rising sooner rather than later. Companies that are pre-commercial and that are obviously in that initial stage of their growth development potentially may be more exposed to that in terms of the shorter term fluctuations of share prices and valuations that investors are willing to pay. But again, that doesn't invalidate the long-term opportunity. So it'll be fascinating to see where NVX heads. Keen to hear your thoughts on it all as well. So drop in a comment below. Let us know what you're thinking about it all. Interestingly, Novonix were included into the ASX 200 at the back end of Friday as well. So it was a big sell-off buffeted by some really positive news. Obviously, we know that funds have to then purchase Novonix and get them into their funds. We know that it opens up this access to capital, potentially mandates that may only allow funds or institutions to invest into companies in, say, the 200. They now have the ability to invest into a company like ASX MVX. So it'll be interesting to see the inflows that happen for Novonix over this next period. It was just fascinating to see these both sides of the coin with the sell-off and then the ASX 200 inclusion happening basically in the same session and so then i guess the question is where to from here if you did enjoy this video don't forget to hit the like button feel free to share it out as mentioned we make daily videos each and every day as well so if you haven't yet make sure you've subscribed with your bell notifications on you'll be updated every time we drop a new video a few upcoming catalysts on the Novonics radar the completion of the first factory for 2000 tpa and then also the shipment of the first anode as well as we've discussed Further insights surrounding the cathode development and the Amira partnership for the energy storage systems. 
As we mentioned, both of these sides have been relatively quiet, but obviously with R&D, the focus there, there is the ability for these to be great growth drivers over the coming years. The potential of the NASDAQ listing, currently MVX is listed OTC, but obviously a NASDAQ listing opens up access to capital and gets more eyes on the story, particularly with such a significant North American operations that Novonix has. And then localization of supply chains and EV adoption. These will be catalysts for the broader sector, but we know with localization of supply chains, as discussed, there's likely to be investment, there's likely to be the opportunity for funding and support from the government side, and MVX stands to be a beneficiary of this if that does play out. Battery technology solutions business is a huge hub for research and development. They have the ability to test, to prototype, to develop, and to look into new opportunities as well, to get insights about the value chain and where customers are moving. So this is likely to be a great hub with their leadership team and the world-class research team that they do have for MVX. Novonix have an opportunity to be that key component within the ENA value chain. The question now is what is the value that investors are willing to pay for that? Obviously there's a range of different tailwinds and headwinds and so it's likely to be volatile and maybe bounce around and fluctuate in the short to medium term. It's going to be a fascinating story. We all know the EV adoption is only just starting to pick up pace so we'll be interested to see where it heads from here. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video. For now, stay well and happy investing.